Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on longevity and bone health. Hi there. Did you know that there are anti-nutrients lurking in seemingly healthy foods? Stick around because we're going to talk about three nutrient classes that may actually be derailing your attempt to eat a bone healthy diet. Okay, so the first group of anti-nutrients I want to talk about are called lectins. So lectins are basically proteins that are made by plants that are essentially defense chemicals. So lectins, when you consume them, your body doesn't really have any way to break them down. They pass through the GI system and along their way can either bind to things and cause them to not be absorbed, or they can actually cause damage to the gut themselves. There are a lot of foods that fall into this category. Red kidney beans, for example, are very high in lectins. Some other foods that are high on the lectin list would include soybeans, wheat, peanuts, tomatoes, potatoes. So lectins can be found in a lot of very common foods and unfortunately can have a significant impact on your gut health. Now there is good news here because if you cook your foods appropriately, you can potentially destroy the lectins, but not always. In some of the foods on that list, also you generally don't eat cooked. So this can kind of be tricky to avoid. One of the challenges is you need to identify whether or not you are having an issue with the lectins Sometimes you can feel them, and again, sometimes you can't. So this is why I recommend to patients to look at the list of high lectin-containing foods, how do you prepare them, and then uh, see how you feel after you eat them. And sometimes you may just wanna avoid some of these otherwise healthy-seeming foods. Lectin sensitivity is also testable, so this is something that you could potentially test, again, if you're working with somebody that knows how to interpret that kind of data. All right, now the next group of anti-nutrients are called phytates or phytic acid. Now, phytic acid is actually kind of confusing because if you read some online content or books, you might find that there is a thought that phytic acid is good for you because it has antioxidant properties. Well, let me reassure you that not everything that has antioxidant properties is healthy and acts like a positive antioxidant. Phytic acid, for example, is notorious for binding to minerals, binding to things that you need to help build your bones. So what does it bind to? Well, it binds to things that you are probably taking for your bones, like calcium. Also binds to things that you need uh, in smaller amounts for your bones, like copper, like manganese, like iron, like zinc. So you can see that if you're missing these minerals because you're consuming something that's high in phytic acid, then you may really have some deficiencies that are gonna impact not just your bones, but also other things like your sex hormones, your immune system, and more. So where do you find phytates? You find phytates in a lot of grains, particularly whole grains like whole wheat, rice, and oats. And one of the challenges here is that we hear about eating whole grains as if they are healthier than grains that have been processed and are stripped down of their husk into either you know white rice or uh, white flour. And while there is some potential benefit of eating whole grains, you have to recognize too though that the lectins and the phytates are actually in the husk. They're in the outside of the grain. That's how the plants are trying to tell you not to eat that part of them. And so uh, when you're eating a whole grain product, you might find more of these things like lectins and phytates. Okay, so other than whole grains, where can you find these things? Again, legumes, nuts, this is a really common source, things like walnuts, pine nuts, almonds, again, peanuts, and some of the nightshades like potatoes. Um, other foods that fit this category would be uh, turnips, um, beets, uh, there's a long, long list. So. Fortunately, again, there are ways to reduce the phytates and the phytic acid load. Um, again, it comes down to cooking, preparation, and making sure that you know how to cook and prepare the foods that you're consuming. When it comes to the beans in particular and some of the grains, soaking them, sprouting them, um, sometimes fermenting foods can also help get some of these things out of there. So again, understanding how to ferment and how to uh, process these foods yourself can be really helpful. One of the hacks that I like to tell people or remind people of is to go back and, and look at how foods were prepared, you know, a hundred years ago, because these things have existed for probably as long as humans have. Um, and so humans have found a way to consume these things. And historically, I think that 
civilizations figured out how to consume the things that were most abundant to them. So if you think about things like brown rice and wild rice, if you go back and look at the Asian populations, they didn't eat that, right? So they actually manually, you know, hundreds or thousands of years ago, they actually manually dehusked rice so that they could just eat the white kernel. Why do you think they did that? It was so labor intensive. And I think it was because that they recognized that when they ate the outside of the rice kernel, they didn't feel good. They got sick. And so I think if you go back and look and say, how were civilizations that had these things around them um, all the time, how did they prepare these things? And I think that's probably a really good starting point. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this content, please take a moment, like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so that when we post new content, it'll come directly to your inbox. Secondly, if you know anybody that would benefit from this material, please share this with them so that we can continue to reach more people. The more this content is shared, then the more people will be exposed to the information that we're putting out here. And lastly, if you would like to learn more about how we manage osteoporosis, please look for the link in the description below for access to our free masterclass. Okay, the last nutrient class I wanna talk about are oxalates. Now, oxalates are a little bit different than lectins. They don't necessarily cause harm to the GI tract as they pass through, but they do bind minerals kind of like phytates. So they bind minerals, especially calcium. This is a big deal if you're really focusing on getting enough calcium in your diet. You don't want your seemingly healthy foods to negatively impact your attempt to get the right minerals for your bones. Now, a second feature of oxalates, which can be really concerning, is that when oxalates bind to minerals, they actually create these compounds, which then the body has to process. One of the ways that the body gets bound up is in the processing of, of these oxalates, and they can actually create oxalic acid kidney stones. So if you suffer from kidney stones, then there's a good chance, because most of them are oxalic acid, that you have oxalate kidney stones. If you have oxalate kidney stones, please look and see where you're getting oxalates in your diet so that you can reduce the load of oxalates. Now, interestingly, oxalates are also associated with inflammatory bowel disease. So if you or you know somebody that suffers from Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, this is an area where you really do need to be careful because there is an inflammatory component in some people to the compounds that oxalates will create when they do bind to minerals. All right, so where do you find oxalates? Well, the most common place that I find it in my diet is in spinach. I used to eat large volumes of spinach. I even used to put it in my smoothies in the morning and I would use frozen spinach, which you can imagine is a, a lot of spinach in one place. When I would do that, I noticed that I really didn't feel very good. So other places where you could potentially find it, Swiss chard, again, legumes, you keep hearing that one over and over again, um, particularly cereal grains, they can find um, oxalates in there. So you really do wanna take a look and see how much oxalate are you getting in your diet? Because again, this is gonna have an impact on your ability to absorb minerals like calcium, but also potentially can lead to some other health consequences. Okay, so what's the takeaway from all of this? I'm not trying to scare you away from eating plants, but we do have to recognize that plants have avoided being eaten by humans and other animals for thousands and thousands of years. So they do have defense chemicals that they either secrete, that they build into themselves, or they put into a place where uh, humans should know not to eat them. We've sort of been separated from the gathering of plants and we've been separated from the processing of a lot of our food. We've kind of lost that natural instinct around which things we should and shouldn't eat. And we really cannot rely on the food industry to help guide us in the right direction. So. This takes a little bit of research on the things that you like to eat, figure out, are you getting a, an abundance of lectins, an abundance of phytate, an abundance of oxalates, figure out how to best prepare those foods and still get the nutrients that you need while avoiding the potential anti-nutrients. And lastly, if you think that you're eating a good diet, I would encourage you to get tested. Look at tests like the NutriVal or other uh, nutrient deficiency tests so you can tell, am I actually getting enough nutrients? Do I have good body stores of the vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids that my body needs, that my bones need? Uh, and if the answer is that you're not and you need help, please seek help from somebody who understands these things from the angle of longevity and bone health. Okay, thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so we can send you a notification when new material is available. 
Secondly, if you know anybody that would benefit from this material, please share this with them. The more times this material is shared, the more people it will reach. Next, if you want to learn more about how we manage bone health, how I recommend that you manage bone health on your own, please look for the link for our masterclass in the content below. In the description of the video should be a link where you can sign up for that free masterclass. And lastly, I wanna hear from you. If you have comments about this material, please put it in the comment section below. We will answer these comments as they come in. If you have ideas or things that you want to hear about regarding bone health and longevity, please put it in the comments and we will create content based off of those requests. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for your attention and time and congratulations on making it to the end of this video.